I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, really, some of these little parts may seem so simple and not that wow. But these kids will remember this the rest of their lives probably, amen? And I think it's important for us to, to support them in every way, obviously, and, and get them involved as much as we can. Get them thinking it's more about Jesus than it is presence, amen? And uh, I think our teachers and, and those leaders are doing a very good job of that. I'm going to just take a few moments here and share a message that God has laid on my heart in this series that we're in, God taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary. I want to encourage you again, I want to keep reminding you before every message, the first message in the series was called No Ordinary Parents. The message last week was No Ordinary Baby. And we talked about all the greatness that comes uh, from, from God's hand and how God can take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. I want to remind you and encourage you that you are worth something, and you are special. You may not seem uh, to be that way. You may not be that way to other people around you. You may feel uh, isolated and, and, and not very important or just very ordinary. But I want to remind you, in the hands of God, you are extraordinary, amen? You are special in the eyes of God, and he proves that throughout time and throughout history of the Bible, it, uh, it's amazing to me that Christmas is now just a few days away. I, I was trying to grab a hold of that yesterday, that Christmas is right on us now, and, and how fast this year has gone, and, and how quick things have went by, and now the rush is on, and, and, and I, I know that the Christmas rush is one of those things that we all run into trying to get those final last gifts and uh, everybody's getting the emails that says this is it this is your last day to order to get it before Christmas amen we're all getting those emails and and it's the Christmas rush it's that last few days before Christmas and sometimes we can get so caught up in that that we really do begin to lose track of what Christmas is really all about we're searching for the gifts that's going to make all of our loved ones happy and our friends happy, that we're trying to find that special gift, that certain thing uh, that just makes them happy. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, no matter how hard you try or no matter how much money you end up spending, you never make everyone happy, amen? I can remember those uh, perfect Christmases where uh, we as parents bought everything we know was perfect for our children. And after Christmas morning was over, we found out we failed in some areas. Amen. We can never make everyone happy, but it's awesome to know that we serve a God who, who has given us gifts that will continually make us happy. But no matter how hard you try, no matter how much money you spend, you're going to end up giving somebody something that's going to get old and something that's going to lose its newness and something that's just not going to last. Amen. But I want to talk to you today and remind you today of something that is so important, us learning to open the gift of Jesus. The title to this message today is No Ordinary Gifts. When we're talking about Jesus and we're talking about what Jesus represents, when we're talking about what Jesus brings to the table and what Jesus gives us, when we open the gift of Jesus, there are so many gifts that sometimes we don't even experience them. We don't even reach out and, and, and open those gifts. And today I want to open some of these gifts to you. These, these gifts are not ordinary. And the gifts that come uh, with accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior Today I want to focus on that and I want us to look at these gifts and I want to examine some of these gifts. Some of you have opened some and some of you still have yet to open some of these gifts that we have through Jesus Christ. And today I want to bring some of those to your attention. Christmas has become so commercialized that the world uh, uh, sees it as nothing but a moneymaker. I don't know about you, but uh, this time of year, it's difficult for me because I say Merry Christmas. I don't care where I'm at. 
And, and I refuse to say happy holidays. And, and uh, a lot of times with cashiers and different ones, when they say happy holidays, I'll say Merry Christmas to you too. And most of the time I get under the breath, Merry Christmas to you too, you know. It, it seems to be just the world that we're living in today. The, uh, uh, that we just, wanna, we just don't want to realize what this season is truly about. It's been so commer- commercialized. In our post-Christian culture, Jesus is no longer looked at at the reason for the season. And he's definitely not considered a gift today. The world that we live in today has... Uh, basically demoralized or brought him down to humanness. He's no longer the God that we serve. He is just some fictional story. But today we all know, sitting in here, that Jesus Christ is real. And Jesus Christ is the best gift that ever been given to man. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise today. He is the greatest gift of all. We have to understand the importance of realizing Jesus is the greatest gift ever given to us and that when we open Jesus fully, there's more gifts. I love the the, uh, the story, and, and some of you may like it, some of you may not, but I do. I like it. I love Christmas vacation. And whenever, whenever uh, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but when Eddie, whenever he says to, to Clark, he says, it's the gift that just keeps on giving, Clark. I can't help it, but every time I see Jesus and every time I open up Jesus, every time I begin to unwrap Jesus in my life, the gifts just keep on coming. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. When we open up Jesus and we allow him to be everything he can be in our lives, the gifts just keep on giving. They never stop. And some of those I want to share with you today. You know, I looked up what the most popular gifts were in the year 2021. The most popular gifts given at Christmas in in, uh, 2021 were gifts of technology. Phones, computers, laptops, iPads, charging stations, video games, anything like that was the top gift uh, in in 2021. The next uh, level of gifts was clothing. Then we went into jewelry. And then the last, uh, I just took the top four, was sports and athletics, workout equipment. How many know everybody's after that treadmill that you're going to end up using as a coat hanger for your clothes and... (laughs) to help dry those clothes that you don't want to put in the dryer. And it's in the way all the time. So now we got to find somebody to at least give me half the money I paid for it. Amen. It seems like we are good at giving gifts and we're good at receiving these physical gifts. But today I want to just challenge you in every way that I can today. I want to challenge you to receive the gifts that just keep on giving. Man, when we receive Christ as our personal Savior, the greatest gift that ever has been given to man, when we receive him and we open him up, there is just so much more to what we have in Jesus Christ. Amen. We can be free from this world. We can live in turmoil. We can live in the strife of this world. This world offers us nothing but problems and trials, but yet we have a Jesus that we depend on, that we love and we care for, and he loves us and he cares for us, and he gives us the gifts that just keep on giving. You know, uh, if we open up Jesus and we receive him, those extraordinary gifts became, begin to come. I, I had so many scriptures, uh, but I want to I want to read just a few scriptures. You can write them down and read them later. But Romans six twenty three says this: For the wages of sin is death. But look at your neighbor and say, but, but. the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus. Let's give him a hand clap of praise on that. Amen. Yes, the wages of sin is death, and the devil thought he had it figured out. But God had another plan, amen, to send Jesus, his very own son, to die for you and I on the cross so that we could live eternally and our sins be forgiven. Luke 2, 1 through 7 says this, and I put this in here because I want to share this with you. And, And she brought forth the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the first recorded part in the scriptures that tell me that the gift 
from, from God in heaven was wrapped. We love to wrap gifts, don't we? Can you imagine Mary as she took the Savior of the world and she began to wrap him up in swallowing clothes? I don't know about you, but she wrapped him up. But we are, ra- we are able today to unwrap Jesus. Amen. Let's give him another hand clap of praise today. We can unwrap him. John 3, 16 and 17 says this. This is to encourage you in every way. Yes, you may know it, but get it inside of your spirit. For God so loved the world. And I love the word so. Uh Uh-oh, I'm getting ready to preach now. He could have just said, for God loves the world, that he gave his only begotten son. But he said, for God so loved the world. Those two little letters, that word so, man, that reaches real down deep inside of us and gets us to realize he loved us so much that he was willing to give his own son to die for you and I. He loved us so much that he looked ahead and he said, hey, there's going to be a group of people sitting in a Sunday service and and they're going to need to hear something good. And I got good news for you today. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Give God another hand clap of praise. He loved us so much. I tell my wife this all the time, and I mean this from my heart, and it it melts her heart, and I'm so glad I finally found something in 45 years that melts her heart. I told her one time, I said, I love you so much. And then I said this, I'm so in love with you. (laughs) She tries to use it back on me, and I go, uh 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 uh, that's mine. Can you imagine how much he loves you? You are sitting here today, and the devil's telling you of all the bad things you've done. He's telling you that you're not worthy. You've done this and you've done this. Just yesterday you've done this. Just last night you did this. This morning you did this on the way uh, to church. You just are not worthy. But I have news for you today. We have a gift through Jesus Christ that keeps on giving and giving and giving. And salvation is there. He loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Anything you have done is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then John 16 says this, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Jesus is telling his disciples, it's expedient. I've got to get out of here. It's so important that I leave here. For when I go, the helper will come. But if I depart, I will send him to you as a gift. We're going to talk about some of these gifts as we open up Jesus. You know, I was praying uh, last week, and the Lord put the the word gifts in my mind. And the, the letter G, I looked at the letter G, and the first thing that jumps off the page to me in the letter G that I have to Jesus Christ is God with us. Man, and, and, and the thing that jumps off on that is the joy of the Lord that I have, knowing that God is always with me. When Jesus came here, he was God in person, in the flesh. And the word says that he was Emmanuel, God with us. You need to realize this morning that you have God with you. Everywhere that you go, every place that you go, every situation that you get in, you have God living inside of you. God is in you, and that creates a joy, that gift of joy that I want to talk about this morning. I don't know about you, but the joy of the Lord is my strength, amen? 
when I start realizing that I am never alone, I am never without God. God is always with me. It brings a joy inside of me, a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, a joy that tells me it's going to be okay, a joy that tells me stand strong and be firm in your situation. Hold on because God's got you and he will not leave you. He is with you always. God with us brings the joy of the Lord into my heart. What a gift from God joy. The Bible says in, 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 Jer- or in Nehemiah, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're losing your strength to battle what you're going through today, you're losing your joy. If you're losing your joy, you're forgetting that God is with you. And I believe this with all my heart. Remind yourself daily that you are not alone. Remind yourself daily that God is walking right by your side. Remind yourself daily that God is with you and he is with you. Who can be against you? If God is with you, how in the world can anything come against you? No weapon formed against you can prosper when God is walking with you. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength and the joy is knowing that God is with me. Give him a hand clap of praise. The second letter in gifts is I, and I looked at it as inspiration. I am, I'm inspired by hope. Hope inspires me. When I feel like I'm in a hopeless situation, all I need to do is have hope in Jesus Christ. All I need is that little bit of hope that I can hold on to, knowing that my situation doesn't look good, knowing that my situation is really dark right now, knowing that my situation is really difficult, but it inspires me to know and have hope in Jesus Christ. As long as I live, I will always have hope in Christ. He is the hope of everything that I am. He inspires me. He motivates me. He encourages me when I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that I have hope in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that hope is the anchor of my soul. In other words, when life's raging seas are out of control, when the storms are going to a, to a level that you've never been to, when you feel like your ship's about to break and about to go down, let me tell you something. I guarantee you what will anchor you is having hope in Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is your hope and he will be there for you and you will not fail and you will not go under. It's amazing to me how hope can inspire us. And like I said, it can motivate us and it can encourage us in every way. So I am inspired by the hope I have in Jesus Christ. What a gift we have in the hope that we're given in Jesus Christ. That third letter is F. Oh, forgiveness. Aren't you glad you're forgiven of your sins? Aren't you glad that God loves you no matter, even if you don't love yourself? Aren't you glad that God loves you and he looks past who you really are? He looks past you. He looks past your faults. He looks past your needs and he looks right into your heart and he sees what he sees. If we could see ourselves the way God sees us, it would change the way we live. If we could see ourselves the way God sees us, the devil would be on the run more than you could ever imagine. If we would see ourselves forgiven of all of our sins and knowing and understanding that I have the gift of love. The love of God is a gift that I can open every day of my life and be reminded that he loves me so much that he forgave me of all my sins. He loves me so much that I can even begin to think of what I did here and what I did there. The devil can sit on my shoulder and begin to remind me, man, the problem that you're having now is going to continue. This is the way the rest of your life's going to be. But I have news for you in Christ Jesus. God loves you so much that your life is in his hand. You are in the palm of his hand. And the Bible says nothing can pluck you out. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. He loves you. I have the gift of love and the gift of forgiveness. That gift of love helps me. It establishes me. It grounds me. Knowing that God loves me, it saves me in all my situations. 
No matter how many times I get in places to where I'm beginning to feel unworthy in life, I can remember how much God loves me. You know, I've said this over and over again, and because we have this earthly example, if you have children or if you have grandchildren, there are times you love them, but you don't like them. <laughs> Amen? Amen? There are times that we probably, if you read the scriptures, Jesus wept a couple of times, and both times that he wept was because the unbelief of the people. There are times I'm sure that I've made God cry. There are times I'm sure that he looked down on me and was not happy with me, was disappointed with me. But let me give you the hope and, and everything that you need to understand about the love of God. He still always loves me. He still always loves you. He still looks past those things and says, get up, I'm going to help you. Come on, I'm get, it, get in my arms and let me, let me get you where you need to go. Let me take you to the place that I need to take you. It always grounds us. It always establishes us. It always helps us to know that we are loved by God, no matter what we have done. You say, well, pastor, I just don't know, man. I've done this and I've done that. I've had people come to me and tell me there is no way God can love me the way the life that I live. And I remind them that he sent his very own son to die for you. He paid a price for you and showed you and proved to you and I how much he loves us. And that love is eternal. The Bible says that his love endures forever, never stops. You cannot make God not love you. He loves you that much. Then that letter T, trustworthy. You know, I have peace when I trust God. You know, when the turmoil of life is hitting me and this gift that I need, I need this gift of peace that I get through Jesus. Jesus said these words. He said, my peace I give unto you. I don't know about you, but I'm talking about Jesus, the Son of God, the peace that he had. And we want to talk about peace. Let's just go to the, to the scriptures and let's look at when he told his disciples, hey, guys, let's go over to the other side. Jesus went down into the bow of the boat and he went to sleep. And the Bible says that so a storm came up, and it was such a storm that it scared the disciples, and they scampered around, and they tried to figure out how they were not going to perish in this storm. And all the while, guess where Jesus was during the storm, during the slamming of the boat, during all the ruckus and all the things? Guess where Jesus was? He had the peace of God inside of him enough that during the worst of storms, he was asleep. In the bow of the boat. I don't know about you, but I have the ability to receive that kind of peace because Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. Wouldn't it be awesome to have the worst storm in your life come up and have all the darkness and all the clouds and all the storms and the lightning and the thunder going on in your life, but yet you're at such peace with God that you're just sitting there saying, well, God, I'm just waiting for you to pull this thing out. I just want to see how you're going to do it and never, ever lose your peace. That's a gift that we have in Jesus Christ. We can have peace. We can have peace when we're suffering. We can have peace when our situation will not change. We can have peace when we're trying to help someone else and they're just not getting it. Well, I spoke to some folks there, didn't I? Somebody you've been praying for for a long time. Somebody you've been trying to help and they just aren't getting it. And man, you're in turmoil over it and you're struggling over it and you're really having a hard time over it. Maybe it's a child. Maybe it's a grandchild. Maybe it's a husband. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's a sister, a brother, a friend. Doesn't matter. You're struggling, but you can still have peace in the storm. You can still have peace in the storm. I remember and I try my best to, to relate to things so that we all have a good understanding. 
I remember when, when the storm of my life came in and, and, and cancer entered my life and, and that storm came in. I remember how dark and how, 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 how hard that storm was, but yet somewhere there was a place that I could go in Jesus where peace came in. The Bible says that there is, and it's in Philippians chapter 4, that there is a peace that passes understanding. I don't even know how I have it. I don't know why I'm not falling apart in this situation. I don't know why I'm not crumbled up and in, in, in a fetal position and, and allowing my situation to overtake me. But I have peace in this situation because I have Jesus Christ, God with me, living inside of me, doing all that it needs to be done and giving me hope and peace in my situation. What the gifts of God just keep on giving, amen? They just keep on giving. Then the last letter is in this gifts is S, the spirit. Lord, do not forget the greatest gift that Jesus gave to us other than salvation was the Holy Spirit. He even told his disciples, guys, you don't understand. It's so important that I go. It's so important that I get out of here because if I don't get out of here, then I can't send you the Holy Spirit. If I don't leave this place and I don't get away from here, I can't give you one of the greatest gifts that you'll ever experience, and that's the Holy Spirit. Jesus reminded them, when I leave, I will send you the comforter. Some folks just, they, they really have not grabbed a hold of this yet, but I want you to try to understand that all the way through the Old Testament, all the way up until Jesus died and was resurrected, all the way through the scriptures, the Holy Spirit was not given to man to keep. The Bible says that it fell upon them. In other words, in the Old Testament, when you read where something great happened, the Holy Spirit was given to them for that moment. And then the Holy Spirit left. I don't know about you, but I do not want the Holy Spirit to leave me for five minutes. And the scripture bears it out that when Jesus left here, he sent the Holy Spirit to live within us. How many know the Holy Spirit is God? He's part of the Godhead. And the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, moves inside of you, living inside of you. How many know that you have the walking, talking God living inside of you through the gift of the Holy Spirit? How many of you know, and I wrote these down because it's important that you understand this. How many of you know that you have a comforter living inside of you? How many know that when you need comforted, the Holy Spirit moves in and says, I will comfort you? How many of you understand that you have a counselor? He's called the counselor. How many in here has needed counseled before? Come on. There's hands going up. They're staying up too. I'll write your name down. I'll get to you later, all right? But there's been so many times that I've gotten places in my life where I needed counsel. Man, I need spiritual counsel. I call one of my buddies, one of my preacher buddies, and I begin to start to lay out what I need to talk about. And before it's over, and I tell my wife this all the time, I don't know what it is about me, but it ends up me listening to all their problems. Now you say, well, well you shouldn't be mad. I, I'm not mad about that. I'm, I'm okay with that. But how many just need counsel sometimes? But the Holy Spirit always counsels. He's always saying, hey, be careful. Hey, watch this. Now, are we listening is another story. Come on. That's another message. I won't bring it out now. But think about it. We all need counsel. He is our counselor. He's our advocate. That means he's constantly inside of us saying, man, I'm working between you and God. I'm trying to get you in line here. I'm trying my best to advocate and be your advocate to try to get you in line to with, uh, with God so that you can get all the good things that God has prepared for you. Man, he is working constantly. He never sleeps. He's my advocate. 
He is my convictor of sins. Aren't you glad that you have somebody guiding you inside of you? Some of us can go to some really dark places really fast. But the Holy Spirit is there to stop that. The Holy Spirit is there to convict us, to say to us. Now listen to what I said. I said convict. I did not say condemn. The Holy Spirit never condemns us. The Holy Spirit convicts us and says, look, this is a problem. This is a situation that you need to turn over to God. This is a situation that we need to deal with. This is a situation uh, uh, that needs to be taken out of your life or removed from your life. And then he says this, this is how we're going to do it. He gives us hope in that situation. He gives us guidance in that situation. He is our guide and he helps us. He's our intercessor. have Have you ever got to the place where you don't even know how to pray? God, I've prayed. I don't know what else to pray. I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray on this situation anymore. God, I've prayed this way. I've prayed that way. I've talked to, I've got counsel. I've, I've talked to the pastor. I've talked to this one. I've talked to that one. But God, I just don't know how to pray anymore. And the Bible says when we don't know how to pray, guess what? The Holy Spirit does. He's our intercessor. He begins to pray for us. He begins to say, relax. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to keep you where you need to be. Man, what a gift from God. The Holy Spirit. He is our revealer. I don't know about you, but I can read one scripture one day, and the Holy Spirit reveals something to me out of that scripture, and two weeks later, read the exact same scripture, and guess what? The Holy Spirit reveals something different and new for me. That's a gift that you really need to grab a hold of. He is our revealer. He is the one who reveals who God is to you. He is the one who reveals who you are and who you need to be. He's the one that reveals all those things that are deep and dark secrets inside of us. He reveals all those good things to us. He's our revealer. He's our teacher. Boy, I'm so glad. I, there's times, I, there are times I know that the Holy Spirit thinks that he's Charlie Brown's teacher. Everything's blah, 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 blah. I'm not listening to a word he's saying. But guess what? When I listen to the Holy Spirit, he always teaches me something. He is the great teacher. Man, if I just listen to him, he's going to teach me something good. He's going to teach me something that's practical that I can use in my life. I had a preacher not too long ago come to me and say, well, how do you you focus? How do you do your Sunday sermons? And I said, I don't preach Sunday sermons. I preach Monday morning sermons. He looked at me and went, well, you, you have church on Monday morning? I said, no, no. I preach Monday morning messages. In other words, I want to preach something when you get up Monday morning and you go to that job and you want to punch somebody in the face and, and you, want to, you, just want to, you just want to lose it on Monday morning and, you, and you, just, you just hate the world on Monday morning, that you have something inside of you that was taught to you on Sunday that will get you through. Amen. The Holy Spirit is that teacher. He teaches us those things. And now I'm going to use one more. He's our healer. Anybody ever need to be healed? Not just physically, emotionally, spiritually. Man, I've needed healed in my life so many times from pain and suffering, from hurt, and from things that you go through and things that you deal with. Things that you don't think are ever going to change. But the Holy Spirit, the gift of God, comes to me and says, it's going to be okay. There's a healing balm just for you. And the Holy Spirit knows how to touch us. He knows us. He's God. He's God with us. So as I say, there are no ordinary gifts in Jesus Christ. I remind you that we have joy, we have hope, we have love, we have peace, and we have the Holy Spirit. When I open up and I unwrap Jesus, Lord have mercy. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. Gift after gift after gift after gift. And guess what? All it costs me is to trust in God. 
doesn't cost money. Doesn't cost me to sign a contract of some kind. Doesn't cost me my firstborn. Doesn't cost me that. It just cost me trusting him, believing in him. John 3, 16 again. He that believes in me. He that believes in me. I don't know what else to tell you this week, and I, I hope that you, you, you gain from this message today. There are so many gifts uh, uh, that, that we have in, in Christ Jesus. Some have never opened peace. Some have never opened joy. Some have never opened a hope. Some have never opened uh, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Some have never really experienced the total love of God. But my prayer is today that you open up the gift of Jesus and all the gifts that come with him. Man, you're talking about putting a nice little bow on it. God knew exactly what gift we needed, amen? He knew exactly what we needed. And he knew that they would be gifts that would last eternally. They'll never grow old. You'll never get tired. I'm going to tell you something. You'll get tired of the gifts that you have here on this earth, but I'm going to tell you something. You will never get tired of having joy. You will never get tired of having hope. You will never get tired of knowing the love of God. You will never get tired of peace in your life. You will never get tired of the Holy Spirit working in you and helping you every day of your life. You will never get tired of that. The gifts that just keep on giving. God is so good, amen? Open the gift this Christmas. Open it up. Open Jesus up, man. Let him come alive in you. Let him be everything that he wants to be in your life so that all these other gifts can come out and you can begin to enjoy those gifts. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. How many by the uplifted hand will say, Pastor, Man, I've not opened all those gifts, and I need to. Come on, get them up there. Amen, 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 amen. All over the place. Let's open up the altar. If you would, come forward. We want to pray together as we close. <clears throat> Make your way.